Okay, I'm trying to find the name of this device. I am not sure what it is. Yeah, 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 I got something of that nature. So this is, I think, what I saw on this uh, Instagram a advert came up. It, I think the company was radial, and it seems to be what this is all about. So this is a radial toggle, and it switches kind of channels. So they were proposing it in church environments if the guys, uh, you know, are singing with in-ears and you hear your, your music director giving you sort of instructions. Usually it's either the music director talking on the mic, uh, but they're not really singing up front and talking. Whereas here it allows the person to be singing and then to flip this little pedal and it changes the channel to be able to talk into the in-ears of the musicians. It possibly might be a bit dangerous because if you mistime this thing and you start talking to the audience, that might come through in the front of house. Uh, but anyhow, this this switch here, and I saw it there. They marketing the switch now. I'm not. I'm not encouraging not to get the switch because this is like a little switch. I might there. You can see your your different settings on it and also if you're needing phantom power and everything it's all built into that so you probably have I, I haven't seen this myself but I'm, I'm just working out on what I saw on the channel and the few images that I've seen so here's an A and a B and I think this is quite nice in that you're seeing at least the area but there's a little flip button here so to my understanding I think that when you flip the button the blue the B comes on, so it's red, so you know you're speaking to the guys, and when you flip the button the other way, the green comes on. Um, I'm going to show you now in Geek Performer. I think, I mean, I use Geek Performer for all live performing, all your routing of live instruments, vocals, you can have setless, you know, it's mega, mega powerful. But if you have Geek Performer, or you're going to invest in a hardware like this, I would say Get Geek Performer, and if you have a sound card, um, you can just flip from one channel to the other, and you can set up your parameters like this. And I'm by no means a professional in routing these things out, but I, I thought I'd, I'd set out what I thought would work. Now, this is basic. I've just kind of put it together just to show the power of it. Now, besides this, um, let me show you here. You know, for those who don't know Geek Performer, these are my other rack spaces, and these things you all create. If you look in the back end, there's wiring here that you have. And for those who work with uh, software like um, DaVinci, you know, where there's nodes and even video editing, uh, 3D modeling and that sort of stuff, guys work with nodes. And Geek Performers just moved ahead of the time with creating these connection of nodes and so forth. So if you if you double click on what, this one, it's going to come up to this little dialogue here. And if I right click, I can add any of the plugins and everything but this is not a tutorial for that so what i've done is say this is our audio input and i'm just taking it from one channel so it's feeding through a, a what you can basically call a, a volume switch so it's two of the same that we have here so i'm feeding the same input through both of these and in this case here um, i'm using the one channel of my output let's imagine that is going to front of house um, and the other one is going to our mixing desk or it could go to an amp on stage to to the musicians for the in-ears to give them a, a kind of idea of what the instruction is. So this is the instruction from the music director. Uh, it could also be used for click tracks, etc. It's quite powerful. You go do your own research. But here we have it. It's going, same signal from my mic going in there. And as I'm talking here, you can see this, this sort of uh, gain area popping up to show that it's alive. And the audio coming through here is going into my output. And that other one would be going to the in-ears of the guys. So in this case, yeah, I don't, I don't have a video to show you the pedal that I'm using, but I'm going to use just a widget that you can set up. Um, maybe let me just show you how it's done. So this one here, for those of you who use Geek Performer and want to see how to set this kind of thing up, what I've done is chosen the one button and... If you go under general here, I've said moment, moment, momentary touch, which means if I press it down, it activates. If I let go of it, it deactivates. 
if I flip that off, then if I click there, it's, it makes the one decision, and I've got to click a second time to disable it. Okay, so momentary touch is what I'm going to use here. So this is like my sustain pedal. Now, if I wasn't using a button on the screen, which of course I won't use in a live performance, um, I'll just allocate this to a MIDI signal from my sustain pedal, and it will work exactly the same. So the principle is here, I take this, and I come here to group, and I put it in group A, and the other button I'm also putting in group A. And the reason for that is, is that when I click this, I want both of them to react, but I want them to reciprocate. I don't want them to do the same thing. So if I click this one, if I press this one down, this one must unpress itself, if you know what I mean. And to do that, this one, I'll make the action that if I press this one, it's going to have the action, but that one is going to be pressed, but I've set it over here in the value that it reverses. If I click here, you can see both of these now are muted because they're both acting exactly the same. Whereas if I click reverse, then this one is going to be unmuted. And if I press this one down, this one is going to mute, this one's going to unmute. So that's how it flips in between. These two buttons I've just put here so that I can click and open up these dialog boxes. So what you're seeing here is just, just widgets, okay? So I'm talking on the mic now, you can see. So now I'm going to go to the panel section to kind of be if this was you performing now. And as I say, this could be one of a hundred of these panels you create for your live performance or even studio things, or if you want to layer your instruments, whatever. If you haven't seen Geek Performer, please go have a check about it. It's next level. Okay, so we have it now that it's performing. Now imagine, just watch here, it's muted. That, that one's muted, this one's unmuted. So this is now the vocal and the guy is singing and leading the praise and worship and singing and the church and people are happy and he's talking and now he wants to speak to the team so in this case i'm going to press this button which is equating to my sustain pedal so if i press this button look what happens here automatically it press the one here now on the right hand side you can see i'm talking to the team but i'm keeping this press down here and it's muting it when i let go of my mouse button in this case left mouse button let go look what happens i let go it flips back again. So this is acting as a switch. So when I press this, both these buttons are reacting, but this one I've reversed the action. And that's how you can get one button to, to reverse things. You could even have a, a button, a widget that is, let me just show you for those who want to see, there's a whole lot of different widgets here. You can have buttons that turn, etc. But this is a one-click situation. And it will work great with a sustain pedal because the sustain pedal is either on and off. You don't want to have the volume pedal that, that has levels of on and I mean levels of volume in it. It's literally going to be an off and an on switch. So in this case, that's what will happen. So if the guy's performing or the girl's performing and they want to talk to the team, they just stand on the sustain pedal. Now I saw in that area that I showed you that there's a light that comes on there. The same thing we can do is we can bring in um, I'm not going to do it in real time now because I might just expose myself to show <laughs> that I, I'm not that uh, hot with these kind of setups. Mine is mainly my keyboards and all that. But when I watched this video of these guys promoting this, I just thought, yeah, it doesn't make sense to invest in a whole little switch unit where, you know, adopt a uh, gig performer and just make that one of the features and then expand. And the more people we have using gig performer, the more we'll be able to get tips like this and it becomes more of a mainstream usage tool. Um, I, I'm not paid by Gig Performer. This is very much community driven. But let me see if I had a switch. Uh, let me maybe just say this green switch. And this is how easy it is to drag the widgets. So I'm going to say when this thing is, is going to be linked to my main vocal mic, and let's see if, okay, I'm not going to go on that one. Let's see, mute. Um, so this one is unmuted. So I wanted to show green. So I'm going to go here and reverse. Oops, no, wait, wait, wait. What am I fiddling with? I'm fiddling with this area. You see, I told you I'm going to run into trouble here. But let me see how this works. So if I go there, there we go. Okay, so... I think what I'm going to do is go back there, grab that one, 
and put that one there so that if I press on here, it shows that that is green and this one is red. However, I mean, when you're looking at these buttons, it's indicating red and green. That's how I chose it initially. So maybe it's a bit of redundancy. We don't need to do that. But hopefully I've shown you how easy it is to create these different things. And for those guys who are kind of like the fancy backgrounds, we can do all of these nice little tweaks on them. Anyhow, that's just to market it out to you guys who aren't using it. So in this case, now when you go to the panels, if you click here and you've got your sustain pedal and you tramp, you'll see this one is red and it's muted. And you could possibly go in here and just go and put in a little note here, you know, something like this and say, let's call this. So maybe going a bit overboard with this, you know, but at least I'm kind of doing the pitch for, for those people who don't use Geek Performer. This is lead vocalist. Um, and then I think we can choose a nice big size font here. Let's go maybe with 30. So we can go lead vocalist over here. And let's copy that one and just put it there. And we are going to say, what are you going to call this? This is MD. Um, well, let's call it maybe give the whole full name there so we can see it nicely. So here we go. And we save this patch. It's going to be one of our many patches. And then we'll get there. Guys playing da 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 da. Wants to talk. Hi guys, listen. Uh, you know, change the key there, or you know, John, you're singing flat. Or... Anyhow, uh, so there we go, and then we let go, and then we're back to talking to the audience up front. Okay, guys. So hopefully this encourages you to get into the gig performer uh, before you consider buying any unnecessary hardware there. As you see, Gig Performer, you can make it function with colors. You can make lights come on. You can do whatever it is. And then finally, let me just show you my, my racks. So, you know, I've got here yeah, my Yamaha Keyscapes. So if you want to open it up, you'll see my Keyscapes coming. It takes a little time to load it there because I've got so many things running in. So that's, for example, my Keyscapes. And I can set my different patches to function with it. Um, I can switch it on, mute it. You, I've got JV uh, 1080 strings in there. This is uh, piano tech pianos. So yeah, you can set up whatever you want to. And maybe I'll just show you here. Uh, wait, this one will probably be better. Let me see, uh, maybe do this one. And you'll see, for example, the, the volume knob. I just want to pull it here. You look at the master level there. Look at this. You see here? All I've done is link that thing up into all the virtual instruments. So these are all virtual instruments. And then also you can route it outside to external instruments, bring it back in. There's, the sky's the limit with it. Here's the other thing that operates my, my vocal mic. That's just a normal output that is a... X6 saturation, that's reverb, that's gate for any noise reduction. And the, all these things are linked to the actual virtual instrument section. So, guys, I think I've punted Geek Performer enough, but for those of you who are considering this, this switch thing, um, hopefully this tutorial has helped you to do that. Great stuff. Have a fantastic day and uh, be blessed and shalom to everybody.